Hi everybody, Mike Weisek here. I want to do a tutorial today that talks about HDR software, but using it in a way you probably haven't used it before. If you take a look at the three images that I have on the screen, you notice that they look like typical uh, bracketed images that are ready for HDR processing. However, there's a problem here, and that problem is the flag that's in the center of the top of each one of these images. Notice how it's been blown around by the wind. That's going to make generating an HD image, HDR image very difficult. It's also going to give us a really hard time uh, dealing with ghosting artifacts. What I want to talk to you about, though, is how we can use one piece of software, Photoshop CS5, to do part of the HDR image work and then use HDR Soft's Photomatix Pro to do the rest. Why use two programs? Well, there's a couple of reasons. But the main reason is that each individual HDR program is good in some areas and weaker in others. One of the strongest areas of Photoshop CS5's merge to HDR Pro is its ghost removal functionality. Photomatix has some similar tools, but I don't think they're nearly as good as Photoshop is. And for that reason, uh, we're going to use Photoshop to do nothing other than remove the ghosts, but then use Photomatix to generate the final image. How do we do that? And that's what we're going to show you. So real simple, all I'm going to do is I'm going to select all three of these images to get started, and then go to Tools, Photoshop, Merge to HDR Pro. Now, before we go ahead, I want you to notice that I'm working with JPEG images here. When you do HDR photography, you really want to be shooting in RAW. This way you can get the maximum amount of dynamic range from your camera. Photoshop is going to complain that I'm using JPEGs as soon as I click this button. However, that's okay. For the purposes of this tutorial, that's fine. But when you're shooting for real, it's best to shoot in RAW. Here's that warning that we talked about. And that's okay. We're going to click OK. And what Photoshop is going to do is it's going to run through its various steps and processes and eventually bring us to Merge to HDR Pro. This is the way that it's going to look when you originally load it. It's going to be set to Mode, 16-bit, Local Adaptation, and here's all these various sliders. Notice that what a mess this flag is up here. Notice what a mess this flag is over here. That's ghosting, and as we talked about before, since the flag moved between each of the shots, it gave us a bit of a problem. How do we solve that? Well, Adobe has made this really easy. Up here, there is a option that just says, remove ghosts. And if I click it, those ghosts will just go away. There you go. So now that the ghosts are gone away, how do we save this image without going through all of the options here that Adobe's given us for generating an HDR image? Because we want to use Photomatix to generate an HDR image. That's really easy. Right under the Remove Ghosts is a option here, Mode, and set to 16-bit. I'm going to set it to 32-bit. Now, here's our 32-bit image, and notice that all of our options went away. <clears throat> all we need to do now is, well, we can mess with the slider, but you know what? This slider doesn't do anything. It looks like it's generating something for the image, but it's really just generating us a preview. To show you what I'm talking about, I'm going to make this image almost pure white. The data is still there. Trust me, we'll be fine. I'm going to click OK, and Photoshop is going to save off this image here. Now, I'm going to save it to disk, and I'm going to call it untoned 32-bit image dot PSD. Saving it as a Photoshop file is very important, so I'd rather not save it as a TIFF at this point. A PSD file is fine. That's it. That's Photoshop has done all the work it needs to do. What it's done is it's removed the ghosts from the 32-bit intermediate image, and then we save that off without toning it. So what do we do next? Well, we want to jump over to Photomatix. I have Photomatix already running, and here we are with Photomatix. Now, normally in Photomatix, you'd go over and you'd load your bracketed photos, and you'd load your, your uh, different images, which are each separated by two stops. 
However, I don't need to do that because Photoshop has already done all of that work for us. I'm going to go to File and Open and I'm going to choose the untoned 32-bit image, not PSD. Now when I open this, it's going to render us a preview. Well, that looks a lot like the image that we saw back in Photoshop, except it's, well, it looks nothing like it. It's not white anymore. It looks like the preview we saw back in the merged HDR Pro dialog. Uh, now there's some dark areas and some bright areas, and that's fine. That's because we haven't tone mapped this image yet. To do that, we just simply go over here and we click Tone Mapping. Voila! There is a tone mapped 32-bit uh, HDR image. Now, since we're not talking about general HDR photography right now and what all these sliders do, I have this image preset. If you take a look over here at the histogram, you notice that we have a pretty nice histogram for this image. And if we click on one of the flag areas with the loop viewer, you can see that the flag is actually pretty sharp. That mess that we had with all of the ghost images, that's taken care of. Photoshop did a great job. And now you're free to use the various sliders inside of Photomatix to actually do your HDR toning. I think the image looks great as it is, so I'm just going to come down here and click Process. Voila! As you see, we generated a 32-bit HDR image, and we are ready to go. All we need to do now is save this image, File, Save As, and I'll call it Final Image. And at this point, we can save it as a TIFF, 16-bit, 8-bit, or a JPEG. 16-bit TIFF has the most data there. We lose the least amount of information. And since I don't know how I might use this image yet, I'm going to save it as that, and I can always downsample it later. So there you go. In a few short steps, we were able to use Photoshop's Merge to HDR Pro to take advantage of its ghost removal functionality. We then converted that to a 32-bit untoned HDR image. We save that off and then load it that single image in Photomatix and was able to do a complete HDR image using the powerful toning capabilities that Photomatix has. I think it's kind of fun to sit and mix and match these programs like that, and it's not something that's entirely intuitive or even that it's possible to do. And when you sit down and you mix them like this, you can get some really creative effects. And since a lot of people seem to use one program and only one program, it really opens up a whole new world of possibilities for you and your own creativity. I hope you found this tutorial useful. It's the first time I've made a, a Photoshop or an any HDR uh, tutorial to put online. And if you like it, please leave a comment saying so, and I will be happy to make more and put them up as well. So thank you very much for uh, spending the time with me, and I look forward to your feedback, and I look forward to talking with you again soon. Take care now. Bye-bye.